Um, okay, so it is my pleasure to introduce Bobby Wilson, who will talk today more theorem in general Banach spaces. Uh, Bobby, take it away. All right, all right, thanks, Irina, and thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, it's nice to talk about uh, this subject, um, and uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm happy you all ha are, you know, had me today, even though you had to wait for a little bit for this. Um, so um, yeah, okay. Um, if there's any any point like people can't hear me or anything like that, uh, just let me know. Um, so what I what I'm talking about today is a joint work with uh, work with uh, Tatiana Toro and uh, David Bate. David Bate. Okay, um, and it uh, concerns. Uh, you know, uh, a topic that uh, in classical geometric measure theory that we're always considering or we're always thinking about is that the, that's the characterization and classification of, uh, uh, of regularity and, and largely speaking, but in particular regularity of measures. Um, and uh, so let, let me just get started with that. So, and this is, uh, you know, it's, it's no paper yet, but we are writing it. So consider a right on measure. And I will write a measure mu on a norm space. Let's call it Rd with a norm. Okay, so again, um, we, we are concerned about the classification of, uh, of, of, of regularity of measures or just classification of measures in general. Um, and we, in particular, measures that satisfy some quantitative regularity conditions. And so one of the earliest, I, I, I guess, measures of, of regularity is uh, given by the density of, of measures. So, um, so uh, regularity via density. Mm -hmm. density. Okay, and in particular, um, you let you know, consider some ball, a standard definition of a ball, centered at uh, a point x. Uh, you consider some number between 0 and d, and you define the s densities. Densities of uh, mu by simply upper density and The upper density. Uh, we say this is going to be <clears throat> denoted by uh, uh, theta star u x. It's going to be a limb soup that goes to zero of mu v x r divided by two r s. We're not uh, incredibly interested in the constant there. We simply um, we care about whether this quantity, or we will essentially consider whether this quantity is bounded and whether the lower and upper, upper densities are, are equal to each other. Let's see, R plus mu VXR to R through this, okay. Okay. Okay, so a uh, classical theorem says that uh, if you can control these types of densities, you can control the regularity of the support of the measure mu. Um, and so a classical theorem due to Marstrand theorem, and I believe this is uh, 1964 or thereabouts, uh, suppose mu is a radon measure um, on Rd with Euclidean uh, norm. And I'll call that a double bars with the E. Okay, so Euclidean norm. <laughs> uh, if you if you have a radon measure in this space, you have S belonging to zero d is any number and e is a 
but we're all set. Satisfying. Satisfying, of course, that mu measures E, as well as, as your density, your full density, or your, 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 I guess, full density, let's say, which is, you know, if you're, if both upper and, and lower densities are equal to each other, let's say that's finite and non-zero for every point in, in E, okay? Um, for every point X and E, I suppose we can say this. Uh, X and E, of course you can say almost every, I mean, almost every point, but of course it would defeat the purpose of defining E by itself. Then S is an integer. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, the motivation for this, uh, I think, uh, at least when I first learned about this theorem, is not obvious. Um, why should uh, this type of uh, you know thing happen? Especially, you know, consider uh, it, you know your, your first uh, your first uh, experience with with. Uh, with fractal uh, and, and non-integral dimensional sets. Uh, the, they're self-similar. And so you'd imagine that something like a density would exist uh, you know, for these types of sets, right? Uh, or at least you, your upper density and your lower density would be exi will exist and be bounded away from infinity and, and zero. But the, the critical part, of course, is that the upper and lower densities are equal to each other. And this is essentially the work. This, is, this does all of the work of this theorem, OK? OK, so let's motivate it then. Okay, so uh, motivation. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll argue for the for the one dimensional case, and then for a higher dimensional case, we'll 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 consider a stronger theorem, um, a stronger theorem, in some sense, um, that gives a better kind of geometric understanding of what's happening for uh, measures that satisfy this density condition. So first, again, let's consider the the one-dimensional case, d equals one. Okay, and of course, um, let s be between zero and one. What we, what we want to do is say that if you have some measure that's that's uh, that's s the its s density exists um, again, and the s is between zero and one, then therefore this measure um, it cannot be finite. For example, okay, um, uh, so. Let and so let E R and suppose that the limit as R goes to zero of mu of V X R to R S is equal to some theta mu X and again zero to infinity. Exactly what we consider before in the statement of the theorem for every point. OK, and so we're going to do a kind of standard standard example or standard kind of uh, arguments and do some uh, approximation. This implies there exists some f, a subset of e, and some m greater than 0, and some delta greater than 0, such that Okay, uh, mu measures f and m minus epsilon controls the density mu dx r m plus epsilon. Okay, and uh, yeah, I'm using too many uh, uh, s's. Okay, and okay, this is a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> Maybe a little bit uh, too uh, technical, but I think it's important to kind of see what's what breaks essentially. All right, okay, and let's draw a picture, and it gives an opportunity to draw a picture and things like this. And I think the the, the one dimensional case is pretty it's pretty nice. So let x one, x one and x two belong to f, um, and x one minus x two. Let's say it's less than the distance between them is less than 100 times delta or something like this. 
OK, so let's draw a picture. OK, so let's say I'm on the real line. I have my x1. I have my x2. Um, I define three intervals. So I'm going to define, let's say, I1. And then I2. And then I'm going to define. OK, this is maybe too long, but 2i1. All right, and I'm just going to do an inclusion exclusion argument. And I'm going to show that this uh, uh, somehow that the, the support or f or the support or, or sorry, not support, but e essentially has to be uh, uh, connected if it exactly is to all of the points at which your uh, density exists. OK, now I'm going to do a little hand waving, but that's, that should be fine. So um, again, i1 is going to be b x1 r0 i2 is going to be b x2 r0 and 2 i1 is going to be b um, x1 2 r0 where r0 is equal to the distance between x1 and x2 okay then Then uh, again, just kind of a simple computation is greater than or equal to mu i1 plus mu i2 minus mu of i1 intersect i2. And we're, we're not, a, this is not a very great estimate. We're losing some things here, but that's fine. Um, which is implies that mu i1 intersect i2 is greater than or equal to mu i1 plus mu i2 minus mu 2 i1. OK, and then using our estimates, we know that mu of i1 intersect i2 is going to be greater than or equal to 2 m, let's see, minus epsilon 2 r0 s minus m plus epsilon 4 r0 s okay and we would like to say that the that essentially there must be some point between x1 and x2 in the support of mu right and so we want to say that this is greater than 0 all right so we want we want this okay but then what do we have 2m minus epsilon 2r0 s minus m plus epsilon for r0 s greater than 0 should be something like 2 greater than 2s to the m plus epsilon over m minus epsilon. And then if, uh, since s is uh, smaller than 1 and epsilon is as small as we want, we, we have this is true. OK, so uh, this implies that uh, uh, support with some hand waving, OK, support of mu is connected. Uh, and um, and the measure of some interval in the support of mu is equal to infinity by covering with smaller intervals. And, and the fact that s is less than one. Okay, so of course, um, essentially what you're, you're you're saying is that mu of i is equal to the sum of mu of maybe some bxi delta. So we have essentially one over delta delta times delta s delta s minus one. All right, so this is the idea, all right, that it cannot be a finite measure. All right, OK. More motivation. So this is a theorem of uh, Martian and Matila uh, separately. Martian 
uh, case uh, k equals two and d equals three, and I'll say what k and d are. Now, of course, we already know what d is, but uh, Matila let e again be in R D with the Euclidean norm uh, and finite uh, Hausdorff measure of dimension k. E then E is rectifiable. Rectifiable if and only if. Your density exists. Uh, the density of the measure of uh, the Hausdorff measure restricted to E uh, exists, and it's equal to one almost everywhere. Uh, four. Next. Any. Okay. So okay, it's a, it's a similar it's a similar uh, a theorem, but it's 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 slightly I mean obviously different. Um, we're assuming that your 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 k is going to be an integer. So let k be an integer. Okay, but you're getting something slightly stronger. You're saying that the support must be rectifiable, not just you know obviously you're already assuming that your dimension is uh, is integral. Okay, so why is uh, this a little bit more motivation? And I will also note that there is a uh, equivalent theorem for uh, measures. This is due to price. 87, that um, in, again, our, our Euclidean space. And this is, uh, this is the conceit of this whole talk, is that uh, one would like to understand you know, what happens in, in non-Euclidean spaces. In uh, in uh, Euclidean space or a d-dimensional Euclidean space, mu of x falling to zero infinity for mu, and this is s uh, for mu almost every x, um, and I suppose I should say yes. Uh, I. We've already said Marshall's theorem, so I'll just say this theorem. If you're k uh, for almost every x, if and only if um, the support of mu is rectifiable. Okay, so we, we have the the equivalent uh, uh, a theorem for general measures. We have it for for the house of measures restricted to sets. Um, the idea. Okay, uh, the motivation or the idea um, is that uh, essentially the the control over the densities, particularly, and this is more this is most I guess uh, obvious or, or, or yeah, most obvious in the the Marshall and Matila theorem is that the density control gives you a, a geometric um, uh, conditions on your set, and the geometric condition, okay, let's say, is. Uh, Marsha and Matila, Matila. Uh, density condition uh, implies that your set E is essentially radially symmetric about every point in E, if you look at a small enough area around your point, okay? So density condition implies that uh, E is radially symmetric Okay. Not exactly, but almost radially symmetric, let's say almost, about every point in E, um, if you are in a neighborhood small enough, okay, um, at, uh, at infinitesimal scales, infinitesimal scales. Uh, I can say infinitesimally small scales. Scales. Okay, so this is the idea. And so once you have this, then you can say that E locally 
um, looks like an arithmetic progression. Progression in um, in RD. Okay. So it looks kind of locally like an arithmetic progression, and so it looks in some sense like a coset of of RD. Okay, so it looks like a coset or resembles. Coset. Okay, and for us, this means that the that means that the dimension should be uh, 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 the dimension should be uh, uh, integral. Okay, and uh, moreover, uh, uh, moreover that you know, since you're trying to prove uh, rectifiability, that you you should be looking like a plane locally. Okay, your 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 set should look like planes uh, of certain dimension locally. Okay, all right, all right, so. Um, in order to, to study this, um, this concept for measures, you need to develop some understanding of, of, of infinitesimal behavior of measures. And so you have to understand or develop an understanding of what a derivative of a measure is. Um, I won't go through uh, the entire process of, of defining the, the tangent measure, but I'll, I will give the definition at the very least, OK? Um, uh, so, so for measures um, yes for for measures um, we develop um, a, a notion of of derivative uh, or a tangent measure measure to understand um, local uh, behavior. OK, so uh, I, again, like I said, I'll give the definition, but I, I, I won't draw any pictures or anything like this. Um, so definition, uh, let mu be a radon measure. On our D, we say that nu is a tangent measure of mu. Nu is a tangent measure of mu at a point um, at a point x belonging to R D if nu is a non-zero. Non-zero radon measure on R D, and if there exist sequences uh, R I C I of positive numbers, numbers such that R I goes to zero and ci and this is a pullback or push forward i never remember the terminology um, of mu uh, converges weakly to new okay as as i goes to infinity. So uh, I will say that essentially what you want to do is essentially, and they call these things blow ups. And for the reason, uh, the reason is that you are essentially stretching the measure and locally looking at um, uh, what it looks like and normalizing at the same time. So you're, you're essentially doing a, uh, a stretching of a, uh, of a measure near a, uh, near a point essentially, or around a point. Um, okay. Uh, and essentially you're, 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 Taking like this homotety map and essentially stretching and stretching your 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 measure with respect to some uh, uh, centered point. Okay, important lemma. Why do we care about these um, uh, tangent measures? Um, one thing that's nice is that it reduces it reduces the complexity of, of what we're studying. So in the in the uh, demonstration of the one dimensional um, uh, motivational uh, exercise. 
there's a little bit of hand waving with what happens uh, locally, uh, in particular at the at the not only hand waving but also the 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 links that I had to go when uh, reducing to the the set F and E, and also the 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 final argument. There was a little bit of saying, okay, well, you know, with some covering idea or some covering lemma, you can you can show that this, uh, this thing uh, holds, but uh, this lemma will make thing makes our make our lives uh, uh, easier. So an important lemma. Okay. Um, let uh, s belong to, to zero d. Um, mu right on uh, on r d. Um, and let's say a is equal to x, where the density exists and it's not zero. Then at mu almost every x belonging to a and all nu belonging to tangent uh, tangent measures of mu at uh, x and I should I guess I should I won't uh, there exist c nu greater than zero such that nu of b x r is equal to c c sub nu of 2 r s okay for all y belonging to the support of nu and r and zero infinity okay so uh this allows us to uh consider a much uh uh a much simpler, I suppose, class of measures as opposed to assuming that the 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 uh, the density exists. We can assume essentially that we have this uniform type of measure. Okay, so um, and we will call them uniform measures. So um, measures satisfying nu of b y r equals c new to r s um, for for uh, for y belonging to the support of mu are called uniform measures or s uniform measures okay and then uh, this reduction, and I promised there's a reduction to a simpler problem. This is given by Marshall as well. So, um, in the same. So, 1964, again, uh, let S belonging to 0D if there exists a non trivial uh, S uniform. measure in RD with the Euclidean norm, then S is an integer. Okay, and it's, uh, and due to this lemma, this is this is equivalent essentially, right? Of course, um, if you're S uniform, then your 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 S density exists. But now, with the lemma, it says that if you are uh, if your density exists, then there exists some S uniform measure on the same space, essentially. Okay, so if we can show that it does that there are no S uniform measures, then there are no non-trivial S uniform measures, then we can show that there are no non-trivial measures whose S density exists almost everywhere. Okay. Okay. Um, so yes. Yeah, so now it's nice and convenient to um, to reduce to this question of whether there exist uniform measures, S uniform measures. And of course, they behave much, much, much better. All right, so now, again, the question at hand, and I've hinted at it before, but so far we've considered uh, the theorems, at least that I've written down, have been uh, in reference to the Euclidean, uh, or you know, D -dimension Euclidean, D -dimensional Euclidean space, okay, excuse me. 
So the question is, um, in which metric spaces uh, does uh, a Marshall type theorem hold? All right. Um, so, um, so question. Avi, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Is important lemma also uh, Euclidean, or is that something you get you guys did? I don't. Uh, I know it's a Matilda's book, but I don't know if it works in metric space or. Uh, Norm spaces in general. Uh, yeah, it does work in norm spaces in general. I, um, I think. So it's not. It's not something that we showed. It's something that uh, it's very easily, I think, shown. I, it might even be in Federer's book. Um, okay. Sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good question though. Um, Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So question in which. Which metric space spaces? Spaces does Martian theorem hold? Uh, okay, so th the answer is not in every uh, metric space. Uh, so uh, yes. They're pretty easy uh, metric spaces that you can give examples of um, uniform measures. I'll write something down very quickly. Um, let alpha be in one, two. You don't have to, it, there are more examples than this, but consider um, the, the metric space where you take R and the um, one over alpha distance. Okay, then um, H alpha is a uniform measure. Okay, so obviously, obviously this doesn't work in this in this uh, general metric space. And so let me give some history. Um, okay, so uh, and a history of the generalizations. So history of generalizations. Generalizations. Okay, so the first one I'll mention um, is uh, Kirkheim Price. I believe this is 2002. Uh, support of measures uh, of uniform measures. Measures on RD with the Euclidean metric um, are analytic, analytic varieties, okay. which implies um, by a structure theorem for uh, zero sets to, um, to analytic functions implies that you, ha you have to be um, integral dimensional. Okay, uh, what do you say, which um, uh, structure theorem? Uh, there's a Two thousand four, I believe, um, uh, a, a result of Laurent that says that Marshall's theorem holds for polytope type norms. So, uh, in particular, the the polytope norm you should be thinking of is just the cube norm. This is the quintessential one that you consider is uh, you take the L infinity norm, for example, on RD. Okay, this is the type of norm that is considered. And of course, in a lot of other norms, which define a, a unit ball that has faces, uh, flat spaces, uh, flat spaces, uh, faces, excuse me. Okay, polytope norms in RD. Um, I believe that S must be between zero and two though. Um, then there's Chusey Jonas Tyson 
uh, and this is, I believe, in 2015. And this is uh, Marstrand's theorem holds. Holds uh, in the Heisenberg group. Berg group. Um, with the Karani metric. So it's the four two two or two 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 four uh, whichever uh, the, the the sequence of the exponents. Okay, um, and so this also uses this uses similar or uh, similar argument to Kirchhoff price. Okay, so um, so let's see. Um, the last uh, part of this, what I would like to do is give some idea of, in particular, the the Marshall argument and what, and and what, and in particular, give some points at which it is not easily extrapolated to general. Bonnach spaces, and, and in particular, you know, even even um, you know, especially the Laurent uh, paper, but also the Chusionis Tyson. Um, in short, I'll give a kind of in short um, uh, uh, explanation is that uh, the Martian argument, as it's uh, originally uh, constructed, re relies a lot on the the isop isopetry of the unit ball for a Euclidean norm. And also its smoothness. Okay, so it's it's a very nice, um, smooth norm. And I can and we can talk a little bit about what that what do I mean by by smooth. But in particular, it's um, the boundary of the unit ball is nice and smooth, as opposed to the of course the polytope norms. Um, they they not even um, everywhere differentiable. So um, so yeah. So let me give some idea about the classical argument of of of, of Mar Martian, and then point out some some barriers to extending it. And uh, barriers to extrapolation. Okay, so argument by contradiction. By contradiction. So suppose, and uh, I suppose the first argument that we went through in the one-dimensional case was also by contradiction. But uh, suppose D is the smallest um, integer for which more strands theorem holds. Theorem does not hold, let's say. Not hold. All right, and then consider, consider a S uniform measure mu with S strictly between zero and D. Okay, since S is strictly less than D, um, the support of mu is not equal to the whole space. All right, so what does that mean? It means you can draw a picture. So let's, uh, let's say, um, say Z is not in the support. Support of, of mu. And if let me draw a picture of what the support may look like. Of course, it will not look like this, but uh, here's just an example of a picture. This is the support of mu. And what I'll do is I will draw a ball. Okay, not really a ball, but a, a, okay, you can uh, suspend your imagination for a second. 
draw a ball around Z and have it intersect the support of mu at a point, let's say Y, right? And then I blow up around Y. Okay, and as I get closer and closer to, to, to y and I blow up more and more, what I should have is that the, the ball should be getting some, uh, flatter and flatter okay? because it has a tangent. All right. And uh, let's see what color I was using. Okay, and the support should still be here, all right? Okay, so the support should be essentially on one side of the ball um, as you get, as the ball gets smaller and smaller. Okay, so now, use blue again. Okay, so take some new belonging into the tangent uh, space of mu at y, all right? Then the support of new should be contained in this half space here, in some half space. In particular, you know this half space as you get bigger and bigger. All right. And I should notice, I should note, I should not notice, but I should note that um, we're already in a situation where uh, general norms, uh, replacing the Euclidean norm with a general norm may not help us. Um, of course, you could always just use the Euclidean norm, even if you are not in the Euclidean space, but this is an issue, and I think this is something that's uh, addressed in Lorentz papers as well, uh, particularly because he, he has non-differentiability of, of his uh, uh, um, boundary of his uh, balls, but uh, we're using the regularity of the ball to, in order to say that we can say, it, uh, say this uh, measure lies completely in a half space, okay? Okay, that being said, let say B of R be the center of mass, mass of the support of nu. Okay, and in particular, the support of nu intersect some ball. Okay, and then estimates, which I will describe estimates imply that new tilde belonging to tangent, that for a tangent to the tangent has a center of mass. The argument's a little bit more complicated than this, um, but uh, this is one of the ways at which you um, uh, display this or, or show this. Uh, there's one other case that I'm I'm ignoring, but uh, uh, it's not that it's not that different than what we're saying right now. So then, support of new must be in a plane. Okay. So its support is in a contained in the half space with a center of mass uh, contained in the half space centered at the origin. Its center of mass is equal to zero. And therefore, it's, uh, it's of course, must, must be in a plane. And then you're done because now you have a uniform measure on a lower dimension uh, space than D, OK? OK, so what do I mean by estimates? And this is really the, the, the hardest part of showing this is what the estimates look like when you are away from uh, Euclidean space. And I'll draw a geometric picture. I don't know if it's completely. Uh, 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 well, I like the picture, but I don't know how many people would agree with that the picture is this. So I, I will I will say that and uh, uh, leave that uh, as it as it is. So estimates. Hmm. Okay, so um, essentially, what you have is again, let's say you have your your half space here. Let's see, this is the origin. And let's say you have a ball here. Y, B, Y, R. And let's say you have the reflected ball around the origin. So this is minus Y. B, minus Y, R. 
Okay. Um, so what you would like to say is something very similar to Marstrand and Matilda, that essentially mu measures both of these balls the same, that essentially you have radial symmetry, right? So how would you do that? Well, you could do the, the simplest thing. You could maybe look at mu of b y r minus mu of b minus y r, okay? And try to show that this con converges to zero at a certain rate, okay? Zero at fast enough rate. Rate. Okay, to say that essentially if you blow up then these things will have the same measure and therefore you're radially symmetric, okay? This is uh, an idea of the, the argument, okay? Um, okay, and, so, and so, so how would you do that? Well, or, 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 or in what way can you go about this? You have an issue with your measures is that they're not nice functions. <laughs> so you must do something to regularize your measure, okay? So regularization uh, in, order, in order to do this, we need to regularize, regularize, to regularize, slash mollify, okay? And again, um, this is my take on it. Um, I caution um, a little bit uh, about uh, the veracity of this, uh, but uh, <laughs> this is uh, my take on it. So let, uh, let f of x, let's say, equal r squared minus x e, let's say this is the positive part of that, then consider not just mu, but mu star f, okay? And I guess I want f uh, maybe sub r, okay? f um, sub r of y, which is going to be integral b y r, r squared minus y minus x e squared mu dx. Okay, just a convolution. Um, and so again, uh, what I would like to do is uh, do some type of mollification, all right? And so then, and mu star fr of y minus mu star fr of minus y, okay? Again, so this measure, or this, this function now is to some extent supposed to be some type of regularization of the measure, so mollification of the original measure. And now what we're doing is instead of taking mu of b y r minus mu of b minus y r, we're gonna take the difference between these two things and hopefully it, uh, it converges at such a, such a rate that allows us to say that uh, essentially these things are, are equal, okay? Again, it's, uh, it's not, this is not the way it's, uh, uh, this is not the treatment that it gets in the original. Um, literature, but uh, this is kind of a, a hand wavy way of um, of showing this. And so, in particular, this should be approximately two integral x y, the inner product of these two things, mu dx, okay, plus um, something small, okay. So maybe something like uh, uh, plus o r s plus two or something like this, okay. Okay, sounds good. Um, and then uh, I'm going to center it at zero. All right, again, this is part of why I'm taking this uh, approximately. But so now uh, you can say, or you can, um, um, uh, you can say again uh, that, um, that uh, one over this, let's say X R S of mu star F R, y minus mu star fr minus y. Um, this goes to zero, and this is also approximately the, uh, yes, I, be, I believe, yes, okay, this is fine. Um, something like uh, y z uh, nu dz b zero r, where the 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 uh, constant here that I'm dividing by is subsumed in the fact that I'm taking a, a a a tangent measure. Okay, so I'm blowing up my tangent measure. I'm using it. I'm using the the um 
the this constant or this uh, normalization to um, uh, for my homothetic map, and then plus um, something or well, and plus the plus zero essentially because I'm taking r goes to zero and absolute value of x less than r. Let's say okay. Okay, and so I have that this thing goes to zero. I have a nice concept of uh, of a center of mass for my measure mu or nu, excuse me. Um, and I know that y. And did I want y or did I want something like uh, uh, yes? Okay, yes, y. I, I know that y is non-zero. So since y is non-zero. Okay, I'm going over time again, non-zero, um, the, the integral of z mu dz b zero r is equal to zero, which is ex exactly the center of mass. Okay. Okay, so this is, this is, the, uh, this is what happens, all right? Or this is uh, how it's done for Marsha in, in a very loose sense. What are the issues? Um, we're using something very, very s serious here. Um, and we're using the fact that we have, uh, that the Euclidean norm can be written in this nice way, or the, the difference, or at least gives you a nice inner product here. All right. Um, you don't have this for general norms, right? And so what we can do, okay, so, um, so note many of these steps, these steps, require the regularity and isotropy sorry, of the Euclidean of the Euclidean norm. And since I'm uh, I actually don't know if I'm out of time or almost out of time, but uh, since I am I will, I will essentially um, describe you know what uh, how to um, Approximate regularity of measures. Okay, um, so so in particular, um, particular uh, norms like the um, infinity norm or uh, like polytope norms. Norms, um, uh, norm spaces. Let's say um, uh, cannot uh, follow this this argument directly, directly. Um, therefore, we will, we can at least approximate all of these uh, norms by a dense set of regular norms. So the idea uh, approximate all norms by a class, a dense class of, of regular norms, say, norms. And these regular norms will be the polynomial norms, okay, in particular, polynomial norms, norms, okay. Um, and so, how should I present this? Um, there are ways to do that. I don't know how. So I, I, I was asked about um, how classical the approximation by polynomial, polynomial norms of, of, of uh, or, uh, sorry, approximation of general norms or polynomial norms is. I, I, I imagine, you know, I don't know this. I don't know convex geometry that well, the industry. I imagine this is a, an old thing, but uh, there is a, a nice thing that's, uh, or a nice way of approximating that's more or less a generalization of uh, the John ellipsoid um, but uh, one can say that, uh, so let's say lemma, let's say, or a theorem, or, um, and I don't know exactly who was the first to do this, but uh, let uh, it be any norm on RD, uh, then for any even integer. It's called m greater than or equal to two. Um, we have the following. Well, let me see right at this. Uh, there exists a d variant 
convex, positive, definite, definite form. Let's call it uh, F sub M uh, of degree M, such that um, M over D plus M, D over D plus M to the D over M X is less than or equal to F M one over M X less than or equal to X for all X belonging to RD. Okay, and do you you can take my word for it. This goes to one. Okay, as m goes to infinity. Okay, so um, so so what does one do? Um, and a nice uh, treatment of this is by um, Madi de Klerk and Hall. They give a nice kind of simple. Uh, explanation of what the what the exact uh, polynomial f sub m is and and the estimates as well um, and this is from I think 2019 actually okay um, so uh, that being said these are regular enough to do the argument it takes a little bit more work it also needs it's not exactly the same thing you need to regularize it to a greater extent because even though these are nice polynomial norms um, their regularity is limited to, to some extent as well, especially when you square them. Um, when you square the Euclidean norm, you have a nice perfectly analytic function. This is what uh, Kierkegaard and Price use, and this is what um, Chusionis and Tyson use for their um, Karani metric, that it's once you put it to the fourth power, or yes, uh, or square, uh, put it to the squ uh, squared, or uh, yeah, it's fourth, um, you, you have a nice analytic function. This is not true for these polynomial norms because they'll be, de they'll be degree m, um, so when you square them, you won't have something that's nice and, and regular, but it's regular enough. And it's enough to give, to give yourself a, a, a second derivative in some sense, not exactly, but uh, at least a trace of a second derivative exists. And so if you regularize enough, so with enough regularization, enough regularization, regularization um, by polynomial, by the correct polynomials, polynomials. Um, one can show that uh, that general polynomials um, uh, satisfy Marchand's um, um, theorem. And again, um, so what do I mean by more regularization? I mean, instead of using something like F R, so for example. fr equal to r squared minus um, uh, x, and I should say maybe x m squared plus. You replace it with something much more convex. Okay, and convexity is a huge thing here. So I replace replaced with fr. Let's say gr. Gr equal to r squared minus x m squared to the k, let's say, and so your convexity is increased, and you you can therefore make sure you have some uniform convexity in the limit. Okay, so theorem, B, Toro, W, um, and again, uh, there's no preprint. Sorry that I gave a talk without a a uh, link to a preprint, but uh, it should be coming uh, soon. Um, mu uh, s uniform with respect to rd and this is any norm where is any norm then the dimension of support the mu is an integer Okay, um, so uh, finally, uh, although I'm maybe way over time at this point, um, of course the continuing work is um, to try to uh, to try to generalize Price's theorem. This would be um, much harder, but it would be kind of a culmination of 
at least this uh, initial question, our first or initial uh, goal was to prove Price's theorem in general, um, Banach spaces or finite dimensional Banach spaces. But uh, uh, you know, at this point, we have Martian's theorem, and hopefully, we plan to well, uh, keep looking and, and keep trying for Martian or for Price's theorem. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm sorry for I'm over time. If I'm over time. No, you're you're okay, Bobby. Okay. Um, are there any questions? I mean, I'm just, I'm a little confused. Can I ask one question? Yeah, of course. Oh, above, you said that this theorem couldn't hold for any norm, right? Or did I miss something? I, I, oh, so for any metric space. Yeah. Oh, for any metric space. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're actually con concentrating on finite dimensional um, uh, Bonnet. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, uh... yeah. No, no problem, no problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so then let's thank Bobby again for uh, for the great Thanks talk. For thank me. you, Bobby. Yeah, no problem.